Get ready to watch Ghostface Hacken slash his way through the NYC in Scream 6, aka Ghostface Takes Manhattan, from the directors and one of the writers of Ready or Not, Here I Come, and yes, Samara ra, ra, Weaving is in this movie, as well as Scream 6 in the opening sequence, but ready or not, yes, I'm done with this reference, but also is from the directors and the writers of Scream, aka Scream 5. If man, woman, animal, vegetable, or mineral are still alive, I don't know why they didn't call it Scream 5, because we already have Scream movies. In fact, we have another Scream movie. Yeah, we have all we have all of them. We have every single one of them. By we, I mean me. I have every single one of these. And why is that? Because I love me some goddamn slashers goddamn horror movies and i was really excited for this let's be perfectly honest the scream franchise for it is a franchise it was a franchise by the time we actually got to the third movie because there was no doubt that we we're going to do a fourth one third one kind of had middling results so it went uh 11 years on ice until we got scream 4 and i recently rewatched all these and i admit they have their faults all slashers have their goddamn faults <clears throat> the first halloween has its goddamn faults even though it's pretty much a perfect slasher there are some stupid moments but then again if you didn't have people doing stupid shit you wouldn't have a slasher and after scream 5 that really was a roaring success one of my favorite movies of last year and i watched 200 movies last year and it was one that i gave a major league a plus grade to i probably was a little too kind to it because re-watching it there were a few moments where i was like wow there are some really super annoying characters <clears throat> and you're gonna get that in some slashers and Sure, some of the familiar tropes and stuff like that, and the fact that one of the characters' deaths was very goddamn obvious because you had to eventually knock off the established characters. Sorry if you haven't seen Scream 5. Just a little spoiler, spoiler for, you know, the Scream 5 people that, you know, if you haven't seen it yet, Dewey, David Arquette dies. That was in Scream 5. <clears throat> so his death is referenced in Scream 6, and they instantly greenlit this. And it's for Matt Bettinelli, Olpen, and Tyler uh, Gillette who did the 103198 tape on VHS, the original VHS, i.e. the only really good one. Devil's Do, which was not good. Ready or Not, the aforementioned Ready or Not, with the absolutely gorgeous Samara Weaving. Good goddamn. Put Samara Weaving in more stuff. She is really good. <laughs> and then also Scream 5. And it was written by James Vanderbilt, not to be confused with Vanderbilt University, because I don't think the man's big enough to be an entire university. I could be wrong. He could have multiple personalities. He could have multiple copies of himself made, like they did with the Riddler in that one episode of Batman the Animated Series. Or maybe it was Batman Beyond. I don't actually remember, because a lot of Batman stuff blends together. Also, he did Darkness Falls, The Rundown, Zodiac, The Losers, Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, White House Down, ID4 2... <coughs> And Scream 5, and then Gary Busick, not Gary Busey, because this guy actually looks human, as opposed to Gary Busey, who did Ready or Not in Scream 5 in some TV. So, returning characters. This is going to be a bit lengthy before I get <coughs> into the plot of the movie. We have Samantha Carpenter returning, a.k.a. Sam, who made the pants too long, and that is why, that is why all these murders happen. Sam, you made the goddamn pants too long. I will shoehorn that reference in any time a character is named Sam. Uh, Melissa Barrera, who is gorgeous. Good grief, she is gorgeous. <clears throat> Gail Weathers, Courtney Cox. The only other returning legacy character, because uh, the studio lowballed Nev Campbell, uh, so she didn't return as Sydney. I will say right now that they do treat Sydney's character with respect because the directors <laughs> had no control over that, and the writers wanted to treat her character with respect, so it's entirely on the studio. And yeah, Sydney didn't return. So it's the first scream without Sydney. But you have Courtney Cox, Gail Weathers, you know, the news reporter and everything. And then Tara Carpenter, Jenna Ortega, who is just, just soared onto the goddamn scene. I mean, last year alone, she was an ex. She was great in that. I haven't seen Wednesday yet, but she was also in American Carnage that was really good. And I do need to watch some more stuff with Jenna Ortega. She is going to be a big star. Her and Mia Goth are going to be like two of the, I guess... Queens, Yas Queens of horror. Everybody has shut off the review because I'm a 42-year-old guy trying to say Yas. So anyway, <clears throat> Jasmine Savoy Brown, Mason Gooding. If those names sound familiar, well, there you go. Hayden Pantier, that was talked about, her character. Uh, Kirby Reed is returning. And then you get a bunch of other people. You get um, Devin uh, Nakota 
who plays a love interest of one of the characters. And then you have Samara Weaving, Dermot Marloni, and various other people that are in this movie. And essentially... You have Ghostface taking Manhattan. Okay, it's not Manhattan exactly. It's actually Quebec. They actually just film it in Canada because it's cheaper to film it up there. But they make it look like NYC, sort of, kind of, maybe. And it starts with an opening scene that features Samara weaving. Let's just say things don't go all that well there for that. I mean, I don't think that's really all that much shocking. <clears throat> and the spoilers will be kept light here. You know, it's just going to reference vague things, and then I'll get into a spoiler section a little bit later. And if you know the stuff, don't spoil it in the comments, just want to say. But then we get something where, oh my goodness, this happened. And then we go over here with this idea, and oh, who is Ghostface? Who is, who is Ghostface? I am Ghostface. Who is actually Ghostface? Oh my goodness, we don't know what's going on. They try to go in a few different directions, and try to be all meta with the commentary, and all crazy, and they try to go in a few different directions. And then we center on the fact that Sam also making the pants too long from working her two jobs, is trying to protect Tara. After not being in her life, Melissa Barrera's character is trying to protect Jenna Ortega. <laughs> protect Jenna Ortega at all costs, I assume, was the whole theme of this. And basically, they're living together, they're living uh, with a couple people. Um, and let's just say a bunch of characters, you know, from previous movies do, you know, previous installment do bond together and everything. I do also want to say one glaring thing about this is they don't explain how some characters uh, survive certain things that happen in Scream 5. I mean, that's a little bit weird there. But nevertheless, you have close friends and then Ghostface starts uh, showing up and slashing. And basically, this is a different Ghostface with Blackjack and Hookers. But no, this is a different and more violent Ghostface. What the hell's going on? This is a Ghostface that's so smart and cunning and also uses a... If you saw the uh, the ad, and I don't know how you didn't see the goddamn ad, there's a bodega um, scene where he uses a shotgun. Because why the hell not? So there are a lot of violent parts to this. In fact, I will say that this is one of the more violent Scream movies. They try to amp that stuff up. And they try to <clears throat> heap on some backstory and make it all twisty and turny about who the killer could possibly be. But it's pretty obvious early on who it is. It's pretty obvious. But then also the way they try to throw curveballs and everything. They, it, it's simplified, yet the way they try to do it, you almost just want to laugh at how they eventually, you know, try to get to the point, the finale and everything. But before we get to that, there are a lot of, you know, stabby scenes. Because, of course, you have to get that in a Scream uh, 6 movie. And, you know, anytime you're going to have a Scream installment, you want to amp it up, especially with NYC. The one thing they do get right about the commentary is because it's New York City and violence and crimes happen all the time. Nobody even notices. Nobody even realizes this stuff's going on. They don't care. They're so oblivious to it because as long as they're okay, they're not going to pay attention to what's happening in an alley over here or what's happening on a subway or what's happening, you know, at a party. What the hell's going on? This weird stuff. Oh, <clears throat> this... A taser got broken up? Ah, that's okay. That's normal. It's New York City, baby. And then basically we get more stuff with Sam Carpenter, who, again, if you haven't seen Scream 5, that's Billy Loomis's daughter. So there you go. And that's her thing. She has the curse. Skeet Ulrich is still following her. She's talking to a therapist. Uh, Tara's out partying. Various people are doing things. And then Ghostface eventually shows up and does all their stuff and does everything that they that Ghostface usually does, and we get a preponderance of backstories, we get introductions of characters, we get returning characters, we get a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm going to say right now, I'm going to hold these up again, I'm going to tell you exactly what I thought of the Scream franchise in general. Okay, Scream 1, awesome. Scream 2, pretty good. Third act kind of goes off the rails. Scream 3, let's be perfectly honest, Scream 3 is kind of the low point, and not even for any... There's no fault, you know, there, there's no fault on the filmmakers. Wes Craven wanted to do his best, but unfortunately, because of the fact that the Columbine Massacre had just happened um, when this project got greenlit, or shortly after this project got greenlit, unfortunately, they had toned down the violence. They couldn't have it back in a school setting, but they had a Woodsboro, they had all this stuff, and that's why they had the Hollywood saying with the Woodsboro sets. And a meta commentary and all that. And Scream 3 just ended up being convoluted and a lot more comedic and everything. And granted, the first Scream had a lot of comedy to it. Scream was also the pinnacle. Scream 2 was a pretty damn worthy sequel that fell off the rails, in my opinion, in the third act. But still was pretty good. Scream 3 goes on ice. Scream 4 kind of had a bit of misdirection. 
it, it bopped and weaved and it kind of seemed like it was being torn in two different directions. Do we go with these new characters? Do we go with these established characters? And they kind of tried to have it both ways for a bit and it didn't, it, it, it worked and then it didn't. But you got various people, you got various people in this, you know, the originals and everything. And you got, you know, <coughs> Emma Roberts and you got Hayden Pantier. And then you go to Scream 5, where, yes, Dewey bites the dust. Do, 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 Dewey bites the dust. Anyway, but then he's going to get you to a ghost face bites the dust. So basically, they reference a whole bunch of the original killers or, you know, clues being left by Ghostface as these murders keep happening. It all tied back to something that happened with Sam. Something that happened with Sam because Sam's being targeted because, you know, Billy Loomis is daughter, she's an easy target and everything, and something weird is going on here. And then there, again, are references to Sydney's character, and there are a few good, you know, few good pieces of dialogue and everything, and there are also some super annoying characters, and now I've gotten far enough into the review to basically say this is the worst entry in the Scream franchise. This is the worst entry. This, the, by far, this is worse than Scream 3. I actually was baffled by how bad and how annoying this was. Like, I know that they hacked this thing up, you know, literally and figuratively pretty goddamn quick. This was not good. This was not good at all. This was sloppy. This was badly done. They tried to have it the same way as Scream 2 did. <clears throat> well, they tried to have it, you know, with Scream, Scream 2, Scream 3. They tried to kind of wrap it like the original trilogy. They tried to do a whole bunch of stuff that would tie the series together while trying to take it in a different direction. And unfortunately, all they ended up doing was having violence happen to characters that we didn't really fucking care about. And then when we finally got to the explanation, I'm like, oh, you have got to be kidding me. Oh, wait, that's not. This is. This was a waste of, like, a good idea. And the fact that this movie was so goddamn catastrophically disappointing was very, very upsetting to me. Very upsetting. I was actually very annoyed by how bad this movie was. And they may do a Scream 7. I will inevitably be watching that in theaters and hoping that maybe we can get back to better. But God damn, this is a low point. You might just want to take the series out at this point and just publicly execute it. Just shoot it in the back of the goddamn head because that's practically what they did with all the ghost face lore and stuff and everything. And it it's not good. It's not good. I mean, I understand what they were trying to do. But it's also been done, it's all been done before, and I end up laughing more than anything. But not laughing like, oh, these are funny lines, or oh, this is unintentionally, you know, hilarious commentary, or whatever. No, this was, I'm laughing because I'm like, what else am I going to do? Because this is really, really bad. This is really pretty goddamn terrible. There were people who did not like Scream 5, and I totally understand that. I love Scream 5 because it felt like a return to norm. It felt like something that advanced... And pushed away, it kept the legacy intact while pushing off on its own. And this just seemed to burrow back in and try and, and trying to create its own legacy. It ended up just repeating a bunch of shit that just ended up making, it made sense. But then you also were like, hey, wait a second, this happened to this character. So how did this happen? I don't need... A huge amount of backstory for a bunch of characters of how they survive particular things but this movie seemed like more of a thing of convenience like oh we need to have this happen to this character but no they're going to be okay oh this character it looks like they're going to bite the up but no no we go here the movie was uneven it was disjointed and god damn that was a terrible third act terrible i was laughing my ass off just like good i was like i was like oh god they but this movie lost me pretty much halfway through. Actually, it lost me pretty early on because I was worried that this wasn't going to be very good and it needed to honestly dial back on the meta commentary. It got to the point where I was like, okay, yeah, we get it. You're doing this or, oh, we're making fun of how sequels and requels and all this stuff's done and all this franchise stuff and everything. And yeah, we get it. Here's the thing, movie. You've established that. You can stop building. You can actually have a movie. Oh, you don't want to have a movie. <laughs> you just want to mock the fact that these movies are being made. At times, it was start starting to be like the Matrix Resurrections where it was just we're just slapping you in the face for the fact that you were watching it. Like, yeah, how dare you? We're going to hack this out because they're giving us boatloads of money, but we're not going to make it any fucking good. 
I was trying to keep my anger low. And the reason that I've gone off, you know, I've gone into so much detail about this movie is because I love the Scream movies. But this was goddamn terrible. And wasted any potential that it had. I mean, there were a couple good moments and then, oh, now we did this and oh, that's the reveal? Well, that's fucking stupid. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to watch Scream again or I'm going to watch Scream 2 and I'm going to... Maybe I'll even watch Scream 3 because Scream 3 was comedic but didn't exactly insult our intelligence until Scott Foley's character decided to take credit for all the murders and everything when they could have just made it that he was Sidney's brother and all that and everything. But the police investigations, all this stuff, I'm I'm very sorry, but Melissa Barrera is a very good actress. But uh, Sam is not a very interesting character and Jenna Ortega does not feel very interesting and other characters that were from previous installments aren't very interesting, and new characters they introduce aren't interesting at all, and you're left with just a pool of goo, <clears throat> just coagulating, occasionally trying to bubble, and then these good movies, all these good movies just sink further down into the goo until we're left with an amalgamation of Scream 2, Scream 3, and I'm going to get into spoilers here just in a little bit, just so you know. But I'm trying to keep this as spoiler-free as possible to explain that this movie frustrated me on multiple levels. And I'm very, very irritated with that. Because <clears throat> I didn't want to hate this movie. I wanted to like this movie. I wanted to be wrong. When I saw the trailers, it did not look very good. And unfortunately, the trailers ended up, um, you know, pretty much playing out <clears throat> how my feelings would end up, well, you know being by the end of the movie it was really really goddamn bad really really bad it's gonna make a boatload of cash at the box office but i'm worried once word of mouth gets around about it how many people are going to stick around how many repeat viewings are we going to get of this now i will inevitably get this on blu-ray because i'm a completionist maybe it'll end up being better <clears throat> down the road maybe it'll age better but this was a hacked out sequel that was not very good in fact it was Easily the worst fran uh, entry in the franchise, franchise rather, by a large margin. When you beat Scream 3, that's saying something. So yeah, I'm going to get into spoilers just so you know. Watch it in theaters, check it out. There you go, that's all I'm going to say. So 3, 2, I'm warning you. 1, I'm warning you. Spoilers. Okay, so Samara Weaving's character bites the dust. Do, do, do. Samara bites the dust <laughs> when she's on a date. She's gorgeous. God damn, she's gorgeous. She bites the dust by, um, a date calls her, and she teaches a class on, you know, slasher movies and stuff like that, but trying to teach about, you know, all these slasher movies, and she goes out to try and find this guy, this date, because he's calling her saying, hey, wait a second, I'm in this back alley, and oh my god, there's somebody chasing me, and then it changes to Ghostface's voice, and he says, you teach about slashers, but then you went in a dark alley by yourself, and then Ghostface attacks her and kills her, and then suddenly the person takes off his mask and, oh my god, it's just some guy. Some weird guy. Who is this guy? We don't know who this guy is. And then he goes home and he's either got a roommate or a boyfriend. We're not exactly sure. But first, he runs into Tara. Apparently they know each other. Oh my goodness. He's in, He. it turns out he's in the filmmaking class or in that class with uh, Samara Weaving as the teacher. And he did. He killed her because, oh my goodness, he killed her because she gave him a bad grade. And then uh, he runs into Tara just before we find that out and says, hey, where's Sam? Oh, she's making the pants too long. Okay, I'm done saying that. Don't worry. She's at a frat party. <clears throat> or she's not. A, I'm going to a frat party, but she, she's uh, gone. We'll, we'll see at some point. Oh, okay. You sure? <laughs> you, you sure she's not going to be around at some point? Why does he want Sam so much? And then, I mean, Melissa Barrera. I mean, who could blame him? He's talking to his friend Gary, and then it turns out it's Ghostface, and Gary's hacked up in the fridge. So, yeah, all of a sudden, these two guys that were doing these killings, trying to be like Ghostface and everything, Ghostface even says to him, oh, you, you treated her like this, like she was an animal. And then Ghostface is stabbing him like, you know, you feel like an animal? Do you feel less human? And then so, okay, so the guy that did that killing's dead, so this is the real Ghostface. Oh, we're going crazy with the twisty and turnies. And then, smash cut to, yeah, by the way, um, 
you know how Randy had a niece and nephew that apparently bit it at the, you know, <clears throat> near the conclusion of Scream 5? Yeah, they didn't. They actually survived their stab wounds. Including, <laughs> including Mason Gooding, who played Chad. Remember? You know, the guy that was, like, outside the house and pretty much looked like he got gutted? No, he survived. Somehow. Mindy survived. Somehow. No explanation. No explanation. No, yeah, the paramedics are able to get to me on time. Something! And then they're all talking and everything, and more deaths happen. <clears throat> There's this redhead that's a roommate that gets banged around a lot, literally and figuratively. Her dad's a cop, uh, played by Dermot Morloney, or Mulroney. Sorry, I always get that name wrong. And then more deaths happen. And there's this weird um, guy with, like, you know, weird poofy hair that's a white guy. <clears throat> that he's so nerdy and he's a virgin. He's in this club and stuff like that. And there's no no way he could possibly be the killer. No way. No way he could be the killer. No goddamn way. And then Mindy goes over the requel and the sequel to the requel and the franchise stuff and everything. And meta, 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 meta. And it got annoying. And the actress playing her isn't annoying. She's a good actress. But she's really very irritating in this, where you can't wait to see multiple characters here bite the goddamn dust. You get Sam, you know, with Billy Loomis in her goddamn head. All this crazy shit's going on. All this weird stuff. And then it turns out there's this weird, you know, warehouse area with a whole bunch of, you know, ghost face and scream memorabilia. Like, it's a shrine. What the hell? Also, masks are being left at the crimes, or at you know, after, you know, crimes are being committed and everything, after these killings are being committed, and it's going from the last movie, where Richie, played by Jack Quaid, and, um, you know, and his girlfriend, who was the hippie girl that was on Brad Pitt's lap in, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That's how I remember her. She was actually, she was actually good. But anyway... They go from that to back, 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 and everything. And, oh, yeah, Hayden Panettiere is a Kirby Reed. Yeah, she works for the FBI, and she's somehow back. Fun fact, Hayden Panettiere actually got brought onto, or, you know, brought onto this set because nobody had heard from her for a while, and the directors were trying to get in contact with her. They wanted to get her for Scream 5, but they couldn't. And then they had a chance encounter with a friend of hers and <coughs> said, yeah, I'll call her. And she said, yeah, I'd love to be in it. She hadn't been in anything for a while. I don't know if she left acting. I don't know why. Hayden Panettiere is goddamn gorgeous. She's always, she's... Been gorgeous since, you know, for a number of years. I mean, I, I I mean, I liked her in Heroes, but what really turned me on just how great she <clears throat> was was just how much fun she had in Scream 4. That's where I'm like, man, I'm a Hayden Pantier fan. But anyway, she survived her stab wound somehow, despite the fact that I swear Rory Culkin stabbed her multiple times. I mean, he might be stabbed, well, I don't know if he stabbed her multiple, he stabbed her at least a couple which is multiple, <laughs> and somehow she's fine. Also, she works for the FBI. Dermot uh, Mulroney, he is doing the investigation. Gail Weathers is there. She gets chased around at one point around her apartment by Ghostface. Ghostface is targeting everybody and doing all this stuff. There's one point where um, Mindy's girlfriend gets gutted when they get in their apartment. All this weird shit's going on, and people are <laughs> getting gutted, stabbed, and killed and everything and all this crazy shit's happening but in, you know in nyc nobody believes we can't get any of this stuff going on the bodega scene was all right i guess it was kind of stupid actually when it played out it looked stupid in the trailer and it played out even more stupid in real time or you know fully all this crazy shit's going on <clears throat> and it turns out that all this stuff is going back to something that has to do with sam they're targeting sam people are blaming sam and Doing this online stuff where, oh, Richie was innocent and it was Sam because she's the daughter of Billy Loomis. She did all the killings and everything. And who spread these rumors? Oh my goodness, people are throwing drinks on her. <clears throat> she's also banging this neighbor guy that's nearby. But every, but the four people that were the survivors from the uh, previous movie are the core four. And then they realize, hey, wait a second, we all got to stick together. <clears throat> I'm going to say right now the latter scene that goes between the two windows is really goddamn stupid. I mean, really, really fucking stupid. Like, everybody is stupid and bad, everything in this goddamn movie. They realize that they have to find a way to 
trap Ghostface, and they're like, hey, we'll use the warehouse. Well, then, <clears throat> um, Gail <clears throat> gets stabbed repeatedly, and then the paramedics get to her. We've got a weak pulse. She gets taken away, and we don't see her again. So, I gotta be honest, I tuned some things out of the movie. They could uh, end up writing her back into the goddamn movie. This could be a way to write her out completely. I don't really goddamn care at this point because none of the characters goddamn matter. They decide we're going to use this warehouse. We're going to use this whole, this, this area to find a way to trap Ghostface. And Kirby <clears throat> comes up with this idea. <clears throat> Let's trap him. Let's do this stuff. Well, before that, though, um, <laughs> there's a subway scene where they end up getting on separate trains. <clears throat> there's... Mindy with this weird creep, you know, with the guy that, with, with the guy she's like, you're Ghostface, you're clearly Ghostface, the strange guy that just happened to be roommates with all of us and everything. And they're on a separate train. Mindy gets stabbed repeatedly, somehow is fine by the end. Somehow is fine. Gets rescued by the guy and taken off and everything and all that stuff. <laughs> the rest of them end up getting to that warehouse, and Kirby is suddenly going to make sure that she takes care of everything. And then suddenly Dermot, uh, Dermot Morloney's character calls and says, hey, by the way, you know the redhead earlier? She was my daughter. Well, she died. Well, guess what? Kirby Reed, by the way, the redheaded roommate was the daughter and everything, and she was dead. Oh my God, he's lost all his children. He's lost, he's lost his children. And he never mentions their names. I wonder who that could be. So what ends up happening is he says, he calls Sam. Sam, not only did you make the pants too long, but Kirby has been out of the FBI for a while. She's snapped. She's gone up her tether. Get out of there. She's trapped you. And then suddenly ghost faces show up. And it's Kirby. Oh my God, it's Kirby. Suddenly it's Kirby. She's just sucking everything in and swallowing these enemies and different kind of Kirby. Different kind of sucking. Let's move on from this horrible transition and go to the fact that Ghostface and Ghostface are here. And then Kirby shows up and all this weird shit's going on. And then suddenly, there's three Ghostfaces. Oh, my goodness, there are three Ghostfaces. Who could it possibly be? Somebody takes the mask off and, oh, it's Dermot Morloney's, or Mulroney's character. He's the cop, and he orchestrated this whole thing. Why would he do that? Suddenly, the other mask comes off. It's the son, the other son that he had. And then it's the roommate, the daughter. What? They faked her death? Why would they do this? Oh, it goes back to Richie, because that's Richie's fa family. They're getting revenge on Sam, who is the daughter of a serial killer, because their son became a serial killer, obsessed with the fact that she's the daughter of Billy Loomis, did all this stuff with another girlfriend, and then they're getting revenge on her for killing him after he killed a whole bunch of people. They get in a big old schmoz and everything. It's Tara and Sam with bricks. They somehow manage to uh, try to, you know, fight him off a little bit. A preponderance of exposition and all this bullshit Hayden Pantier's character shows up. All this weird, <laughs> goddamn convoluted stuff keeps happening. Every family member gets dispatched. I mean, the son gets a knife through the goddamn mouth. The daughter gets shot in the head. Uh, Dermot's character gets um, eventually stabbed repeatedly. And then hands, uh, hands a knife off to Tara, and she does that, and all this weird shit goes on, and oh my goodness, everybody's dead, everybody's dead except these characters, and wait a second, Chad, who was with them, who got stabbed repeatedly, is somehow alive, pulling the screen too, and Mindy's alive, and Mindy wouldn't shut up about the fact that she wasn't sure, or she's like, I can't believe I got it wrong, wait, I got it right, ha 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 ha, I got it, <sighs> and then... It it just it ends it ends. We're getting a scream. Uh, we're getting a scream seven. By the way, there is a post credit scene where it's literally just Mindy saying, "Not every movie needs to have a post credit scene." Yeah, I kind of went off a little bit about this movie. This is the longest movie review I've done in a while, but I'm going to explain why I went off for so goddamn long on this. This was terrible. This was a hodgepodge of ideas that did not work at all. None of this worked. None of this. This was really. <laughs> Really, really apocalyptically bad. I hated this. I hated this version. 
I will buy it eventually. I, I'll, I hate this entry. I will buy this on Blu-ray eventually, but I will buy it when it is super goddamn cheap. This get Scream 6 gets an F. It is really, really bad. I open myself up to hate here, especially if anybody's watching by this point. It gets an F. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.